Kia ora whanau. It's awesome to be back in front of you. So it's Roger Hainga here again, aka Zap. And um, I'm just going to share with you um, some of the awesome learnings that I've um, learnt this week going through um, our learning module for, um, this is part one. Um, and it's all about uh, all of the stuff that we need to do in order to create a one-page online store um, in order to start um, selling products uh, based in incorporating um, the methods that we are learning um, while we are going through the kahawi te ao i in, uh, Indigenous e-commerce course that we're we're fortunate to be doing. Um, so yeah, so it's looking at creating a one-page um, online store, um, and one of the key things that we need to learn about is creating uh, effective, high-quality photos to, you know, promote our our products or services um, on that on that uh, store, um, and. We were fortunate enough to get a link to a, a, a tutorial, information a tutorial on how to do that with um, something as simple as a smartphone and a, a small tripod and knowing, learning how to, um, you know, manipulate and utilise uh, the lighting that most people have available to them with something as simple as the sun outside and the window and a few other little key things around the place. Um, I won't go into all those details, I'm sure you can go and find some stuff online um, if you're curious about that stuff. Um, but one thing that um, we were also encouraged to do is to go and look at um, you know, other people that are doing, that are, have online stores and have a look at how they, uh, at their photos um, and um, you know, Compare it to to our own thinking or what we've already uh, what we're already doing. Um, so I did look at um, a competitor's. Oh, I don't want to use that word. I looked at another uh, someone who was um, selling runga online, um, and the photos that they used. Um, something that I noticed: their photos are they're obviously done indoor, um, using natural lighting that was coming in through and. Uh, an outside source, um, possibly that source. It might have included having an overcast sky um, and something that gave me that inclination was the, you know, sort of white grey shading of the photos, uh, the natural shadows which appear quite heavy. Um, they used props like flowers and other trinkets, books and that kind of thing. Um, in the background and surrounding their products. Um, so I took a look at those and these were my opinions. Um, not to say that if that's the photos that work for them, kia kaha, um, all the more power to them. Um, awesome, and this is not my own personal opinion of the uh, Rungoa products either. This is just me and what I gleaned from just looking at their photos. So I found their photos were quite busy and that's because of the props that they used. And those props seem to not totally distract me but steal some of my attention away from their product. Um, and you know with the lighting uh, and all of that sort of stuff with being quite you know grey kind of overtone uh, or undertone um, and quite heavy shadows um, they appeared unprofessional in my p opinion um, and led me to possibly consider that the production of those photos was done on the cheap um, and you know I could be led to wonder whether the production level of the rungwa might be also on the cheap Okay, I'm not saying that they were, that's just in this exercise. <laughs> cool. So the next section that we went on, oh, before I go on to that, you know, um, that was really good learnings for me because I already have products and photos up online and available now. And 
they're probably right in, on par with the quality of these other ones that I've used to assess um, for this exercise. So um, yeah, um, I'm going to need to go and redo those photos. Okay, to bye. <laughs> and the next part um, was product descriptions. You know, how do I write um, an intriguing and capturing product description that might hopefully lead people to be curious enough and interested enough to make a, make a purchase. So, um, yeah, the key pointers that I, I took away, uh, and I've specifically tried to relate these to taking their points and trying to relate them to my, my runga, um, is, uh, okay, who's my audience? And so, in writing this, my, I am having a conversation with my ideal customer and I've already gone through and figured out who an av my avatar is and that's who I'm going to be targeting when I create write this story that's who I'm talking to. Um, an important part that I, I hadn't thought of and this was new for me and I thought it was awesome um, is that it's important to remember that customers are not buying the products themselves, they're buying the results that that product might provide. So for me, those uh, my avatar is uh, looking to, for to buy results um, that the runga will provide. Uh, yeah, and so that will definitely uh, influence the tone and the cordial that um, I write in the descriptive. Um, it's good to avoid cliches uh, and the common, you know, cliches that are, are used in advertising um, and marketing. Um, I think the difference with some, tari, you know, there are some awesome te Māori words that I will use um, potentially, um, but like uh, Modi, Modi ora, hau ora, wai ora, you know, those types of, of words, which I think are really awesome um, to use. But to make sure that I am using them well, that they are very obviously related to what the rongwa, um can provide and do, um, and not just using them because they're cliche Māori words to be in, you know, attention grabbing and blah blah blah, they, they actually make sense in relation to what I'm talking about. Um, appealing to imagination, you know, that's always, so that's about painting a picture, you know, using those words, using kūpū that um, will depict, you know, the experience of using rongoa, of using my rongoa, you know, um, which might include, you know, the sight, the sound, the smell, touch, taste experience of using the rongoa, the healing experience, the relief experience of using the rongoa. Um, also using mini stories, um, korero purako, um, however, <laughs> to ensure that um, if I'm using Korero Purako is to be very brief and subtle and short and sweet. Um, yeah, um, and so, you know, I might allude to uh, Korero Purako or touch on an aspect of a Korero Purako or my own personal experience or something like that. I, I'm not sure yet. Um, Writing it, making sure that um, it's skim friendly, I really appreciate that because I am a person who will skim for the gist and then if the, the gist hits me and I'm intrigued, then I'll go and have a look at detail if I'm looking at products online. So yeah, that's something that um, I will make sure that I do. Um, and the other one that I hadn't thought of doing, but um, I will do, I think. Um, is to, you know, write the product description, case of pipe, write another one, you know, try to find a 
write a, a different one, slightly different or totally different, and then write another totally different one and then test them out. So, but test them out one at a time. <laughs> so pop it up uh, and see which one of those, you know, either generates the most views uh, or sales or, or inquiries. Yeah, so that was that was awesome learning about um, how to write an effective product description. Um, the last part of the module this week um, was about uh, you know how to convey social proof um, in in my product descriptions. Um, now um, I went on and watched the video uh, that was provided, and the video didn't actually work for me. As well as I assume they intended it, so I'm pretty confident they intended it to work. Now, um, I, that could be because there was a glitch either with YouTube, there, there could have been a glitch with my computer system, although I don't think so because everything else is working fine. Um, so, but what was happening for me while I was watching that is that the audio um, and what the audio was describing was not matching with the visuals okay um so it was kind of a slideshow visual on in the video timeline um but the audio seemed to be going ahead further and describing things that weren't actually visible to me yet on screen and so i'll be watching a visual of two people and then the audio would be describing a product and features of that product and, and you know stuff around the settings that weren't visible to me on the screen. Um, yeah, so the result was um, that I stopped watching the video. You know, why did I stop? I tried looking at the video timeline, uh, previews um, on the video timeline for a possible quick fix solution to to, to fix the alignment and the timings, uh, but no obvious so solution presented itself. Um, I could have probably gone and found a workaround solution, but uh, that just creates work for me, and I, yeah, um, it could be, as I was describing before, it could be a technological glitch or an automated production error, you know, and I think the latter is probably highly likely. Um, and even if they are using automated production, um, that gives me a sense that the production, uh, the producers, sorry, are potentially lazy, um, and automated stuff always seems very impersonal, very generic template-y sort of thing. Um, and you know, to my general sense at the end of it um, was, you know, if they can't be bothered at ensuring that their video uh, would play smoothly for me, um, I distrust that they could be bothered ensuring, you know, the caliber of the information in the video. Um, and I don't know that it would have much value for me. Um, and that's just the sense I got from that experiencing that issue. Um, I hope that was just a, a sheer experience by me and the other learners didn't have that same experience. Or maybe that that experience was left in there on purpose um, so that, uh, you know, uh, we could get a real live uh, experience of when things don't work, that um, that experience that it can have on the person that's that's watching the resource um yeah it's highly probable i've been an educator before and used that tactic myself so if that was the tactic well, cheer cheer good on you um haha <laughs> but um yeah anyway the lesson that i came away from that experience uh, was to make sure that any information or descriptive resources that i create develop and especially for when I take them live, that they don't create a similar experience for people who come to my website. Cool. And so that's about it for this week. Um, Kanu to mihi ki akaito anō. Thank you so much for 
showing an interest whether you've been watching all of my videos that I've been posting every week or whether you just stumbled across this one and decided to see it through to the end. Ka nui tamihi katoa. Um, hopefully I'll catch you next time. Um, I've got one more video that I'm going to be posting today after I've watched um, the kōrero from our Belief Changes uh, guest speakers that um, our class has um, every Sunday. So I missed last Sunday's one because uh, I had other commitments that I just had to um, just had to uh, go and uh... no, I didn't miss it. Shame on me. <laughs> I didn't miss it. I need to go back and refresh my mind and then I'll post the video uh, a little bit later today um, just on my reflections. Okay, so kakite ano um, Yeah, pai tora.